America's dragon, the great primal master of our rich, low waters. They're spellbinding and mesmerizing. An elongated, streamlined, but still prehistoric hunter in a watery glen. The alligator is a symbol of triumph, endurance, and time. Here on this island, living so close, we sense something of the alligator's great age, their sheer desire to last and to live. We recognize their absolute appropriateness to this landscape. There are perhaps 500 alligators on Kiowa Island, surviving soldiers from an ancient tribe that started millions of years in the past. The order that alligators are part of, Crocodilia, rose perhaps as long as 85 million years ago. The specific species here on Kiowa, the American alligator, evolved into being about 10 million years back. A lot has happened in that time. Continents have drifted across the seas, the oceans have risen by hundreds of feet, dropped by hundreds more. But alligators, these ancient, wise learners, have lasted through much of the Earth's change, and not by accident. They are perfectly built for their environment, for surviving. The alert eyes, peering up above the water, checking for prey, watching for intruders into its realm. The great headpiece, this fierce mask, supporting the great jaw, a foot across, two feet long. The long, strong tail that propels its body quickly forward, curling and flowing across the glassy water with the gliding ease of a matador's cape, while barely raising a ripple on the water's surface. A ballet on the water, choreographed for a creature who can grow up to 15 feet long and weigh a thousand pounds. The alligator's grace was created for good reason. It was designed to cloak their awesome power and fierce hunter's resolve. I think the alligators at Kiowa have done so well over the years, partially because of their general biology. They're just tough animals. They, they can endure a lot. They've endured a lot over the millions of years they've been on the planet. They're built to survive. Uh, but an, another part of that, which is unusual, I think, is that the people of Kiowa, the town and the people that come to live here and stay here, um, have accepted the animals as part of the landscape. And there's, there's not a, a witch hunt, so to speak, to get rid of all the animals because of the potential dangers to uh, people and to pets and things like that. Instead, they've embraced the animals as part of the landscape, part of the, almost like an iconic figure of Kiowa, much like some of the other animals of the birds and sea turtles and things like that. But that ethic, I think, has gone a long way in protecting the animals. And there have been other uh, areas in South Carolina where that's not been the case. And so it's, it, Kiowa, I think, is unique in that respect. Time has been the alligator's friend because the alligator knew how to slip over the surface of time. But things are different now, where shifting continents, swelling seas, and rising glaciers could not defeat or extinguish the alligator. Humans can. We are the threat. But if we are to protect them, we need first to understand them. Surprisingly, little is known about the daily lives of alligators the simple facts that make up their existence. So an in-depth study has been launched to learn all we can about our alligators. We want to know how they live, what they do, what they need. Uh, this conversation I had with Jim Jordan, the head biologist of the town, a few years ago, I asked Jim what it is we, what were the main things we didn't know? What, what should we be looking at? And Jim said one of the first things he said was, we don't know much about the alligator population. In spite of the fact that it's 500, 400, 700, we just don't know much about them. So that was really the genesis of this whole program. And then Lou Gillette came and gave a lecture and about alligators and alligator biology, and from there it was easy. And that began the program then, of looking at what the effect of environmental pollutants might be on alligator biology here on Kiowa. 
Uh, they were very interested in that because they want to contrast that with more wild areas of South Carolina, the East Basin, with more industrial areas in Georgetown, and they do extensive work in Cape Canaveral. So Kiwa fits into an overall study uh, on, on the whole East Coast of, of alligator biology and the effect of the environment on that. In addition, people like me get just a great thrill out of uh, learning about things we never would have guessed, uh, we would ever know about. Um, in terms of the alligators. So we're really happy that the whole program is underway. Alligators were some of the earliest settlers on Kiowa. They have an original claim to these creeks and ponds, these marshes and lagoons. And Kiowa has made a proud commitment. Our alligators are here to stay. They helped to give Kiowa its unique character and special cachet. The most incredible thing about Kiowa Island is how accessible our wildlife is. No matter where you walk, no matter where you travel, there's wildlife all around us. And the most important thing is that people understand how to behave, how to interact with our wildlife. Alligators are one of those things that can be seen throughout Kiowa. We have over 500 alligators and they're in every single pond on this island all different size classes, from alligators that are 11 to 12 feet long to little hatchlings that were just born a few months ago. Most important is not to feed the alligators. Alligators, once they're fed, learn to associate people with food and actually may approach someone looking for additional food, and that is really dangerous. They can be found crossing bike paths, even crossing a street. What you want to do is, if you see an alligator, give it a wide berth. Never walk between the alligator and the pond, because if an alligator feels threatened, he needs to escape into the water. So what you want to do is maintain a distance. We say about 60 feet, but the wonderful thing about Kiowa is that we've created all of these overlooks and bridges so that you can safely stand on a deck or on a bridge and look down and see those alligators swimming. And you don't need to worry about if you're too close. So always maintain that distance because they can lunge very quickly. So take joy in the way that our alligators naturally behave on Kiowa and watch them from a distance. Alligators are central to Kiowa's environment. As the top hunter in the long food chain, extending from pond bottom to grassy marshes and forest, their actions ripple down to all the lesser creatures. It's called a cascade effect. They help to keep the balance between all the competing interests. They're part of this habitat if you really understand it and you're educated and vigilant about it, you understand that these animals are vital to keep this habitat functioning. You take out all of the adults and what do you start to lose? You start to lose waterways through the marsh so that other animals can pass through more readily. You lose these big holes that when there's a drought event that the alligators will dig this 10 foot deep hole and that's usually where all the fish and amphibian species collect so that they can survive until the rain. And without that, you just would have a lot more devastation during those times of hardship. I mean, they are a top predator, so if there is a population's in flux due to um, predator and prey relationships, they will actually pick up the slack if there's an overabundance of deer, if there's an overabundance of rabbits, because conditions change or because management in the areas change. Alligators will help bring that back to the natural harmonic state. American alligators can slow their metabolism and survive with little food. A full-grown alligator can get by on one good meal a month. They snuggle down into the mud. They slow their bodies down. They wait. One meal a month, and they'll be fine. Tricks like that get you through millions of years. Alligator armor is amazing. Its skin but its armor, skin in a bone-like form. The alligator's back is equipped with rows of bony plates called osteoderms that link up like chinks in chainmail. Why such defense? Why carry a steel-hard plate on your back? To be honest, it's to defend alligators from each other. They're a very territorial species. Bulls establish and hold territory. Females guard and protect nests. And the disputes can be fierce. 
And their mating rituals? Ah, human males crooning their hearts out have nothing on an alligator bull. His courting call starts somewhere deep in his chest and comes out like a sonic boom. The great head lifts toward the sky. His tail arches high out of the water and he emits a bone rattling bellow. It is said to carry for miles Infrasonic waves from a bellowing male are so intense, they can cause the water to dance over his back, to literally sprout and spray into the air above him. Witnessing an alligator's love serenade is a never forgotten experience. And they're quite the lovers too, following all the bellowing. Surprisingly gallant and gracious, the courting couple meet in the water and gently touch noses. They may nuzzle and caress each other with their heads. Soft touches from plated skin. And in due time, nests are built, eggs are laid, hatchlings emerge, and the generations of alligators continue on. And perhaps not so surprising, after such a tender courtship, alligators are wonderful mothers, dedicated, serious mothers, certainly unrivaled in the reptile family. Now it's up to us to see that this glory continues. Such a subtle distillation of grace and power such a clever combination of force and finesse. Such a fierce desire to live must be honored. Alligators are, are a big part of our ecosystem. You know, they were here long before people were. Um, and honestly, they'll probably be here long after people are gone. Um, but, but alligators, you know, they tell us something about the environment. Wildlife is so important to most folks here. In fact, it's, it's a big reason a lot of people come here. And alligators are just another part of that. They're part of the ecosystem. They're supposed to be here. We like for them to be here. And the fact that they're here means we're doing some things right. There's a wisdom in their long history and endurance that would diminish us if it were lost. Times have changed, indeed. We can obliterate the marshes and wetlands should we choose. We can end the long alligator reign, but we won't. Not here, not on this island. We will protect them and celebrate their place in our hearts, here on Kiowa. This program was made possible by the generous support of the Taylor Agency and the town of Kiowa Island and the many supporters whose contributions fund the Kiowa Conservancy. Future programs depend on your continued support. Thank you. Mm -hmm.